So this here is a Hewlett Packard plotter. This is what we use for printing out giant drawings for engineering, surveying, and AutoCAD related stuff. This is a DesignJet T770. Pretty cool machine. It'll print up to 48 inches in width. And I forget how long, but it'll just crank out drawings. And we're plotting out a drawing right now of a survey map. Just thought I would get a clip. So it's been seven days. Heading out to do foliar feed number three for the season on tomatoes, potatoes, turmeric, ginger, holy basil, etc. Go to load up the barrel. And here's a little tree toad friend of mine hanging out. So I thought I would just give you a nice close-up of this guy. Because these guys are too cool. Check on the Ram Pool Reservoir just to see how much water we're using. And the tree frogs are in full concert. And I just thought I would share it with you quick. It's really cool. They're pretty used to me now, so they don't really stop. Can we relocate you? Is that cool? We got a movie where you don't get hurt. Can we swing that? Yeah, I kind of thought you were down. Okay, dude, we're gonna move you now. All right? Can I just prompt you? Can I prompt you? He's like, yo, dude, I'll mess you up. I'll mess you up, you touch me. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you, I just want to move you. Can we get you to move? Can you be a friendly little guy? Can I pick you up gently? Hey, that's my little pal. That's my little pal. That's pretty cool. All right, so foliar pump is still giving me a really hard time. <laughs> I will spare you the explicatives that were used. <laughs> And of course, after all that, uh, I go back to get some video, and the um, main phone died, so I'm running on the backup phone. They're really cranking. Uh, about time to get them bumped up and out into the ground soon. I need to find a spot on the farm for them. The uh, sea buckthorn, one, two, three, four, are doing well. The one ginger that was in that pot popped up and doing all right. Peppers are doing okay. Turmeric is up. Potato is spreading its wings. Beans are up with that. Around that. And beans are up in here. This is... God, my handwriting is horrible. ST, that's a basil. So that's a basil, large leaf basil, I think. And this is the catnip. Neither of those are really showing much yet. Not much doing on strawberries, if anything. Lemon verbena is adjusting to its new setup. through with wind noise. One of my favorite sounds in summer evenings is all the different insects singing and how you can hear them. Even as you drive by in the car, you can hear them. It's like an ongoing chorus that you just keep passing this chorus. So I'm on my way back up to the farm. I gotta go collect the uh, foliar pump and bring it back for some rework because it was giving me nothing but aggravation. Uh, I think the primary issue is that uh, cheap screen filter that I bought. I gotta replace that and get a, uh, a quality disc filter again because those screen filters just clog too quick with foliar feed stuff. The other problem I was having with it is it leaks air. That filter does not lock up a nice seal. And 
so every once in a while it starts sucking air again. So about the time you get the spray wand going and go to do a foliar feed is about the time that it screws up on you again and it turns into a really frustrating loop of chasing, getting it working, and then it dies on you again. And I can't have that, you know. I used to have it set up on the old farm. I could go out there, dump 15 gallons into my foliar feed reservoir, and uh, drop my mix in for whatever the target feed I'm after is, blend it, and roll, and have it on in 20 minutes or half an hour. Literally have foliar fed every single crop, I don't know, it was an acre and a half or so in production in half an hour. And now I'm up here uh, on the potatoes, and, and I would be through there in 15 or 20 minutes on the Massey with the foliar wand if the foliar pump was working right. So that's a huge efficiency hole that's causing me, costing me a lot of time and causing me a lot of aggravation. So I'm going to pull it back and try to rework it. And ultimately the goal is to set it up so it'll work off in the car or the truck or the tractor pump and eventually boom set up so we can drive through the rows with the booms and just fully feed everything down the road. But for now we're uh, we're in the interim, we're in the build. Um, the build though is, is very challenging anytime you build any major project. It's, it's the, the inefficiency of not having the other infrastructure and pieces in place, plus all the complications of building a new project, and then all the issues you run into on top of that in normal everyday operations of trying to do any project. You know, you're going to do one thing and something breaks, and you're going to do something like that, and something else breaks to do that. Next thing you know, you're six jobs away fixing something so you can get back to the job. Like my friend Joe says, <laughs> the job before the job, and I extend that to the job before 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 the job gets you. <laughs> anyway, these are the complications I'm going through right now. It's July 3rd, 2024. It's a beautiful evening. Of course, we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to go up and snag the foliar pump, and I'll probably take a little walk around, look at plants think about how to lay things out a little better. Uh, one thing I'm finding not living on a farm, uh, again, it's very hard to get a good sense of the land when you're not there, like, experiencing it every day on a regular basis, you know, coming, going across it, moving around it, being embedded in it makes a huge difference in how much you sort of register or, or come to gain from the land and knowledge and understanding of how the intricacies and all the little things in that piece of land function and operate with each other. Uh, so I'm going to try and spend a little bit of time up there tonight, just walking around, looking at things, thinking about things. And I have to make a point of spending more time doing that. Uh, but it's just hard to do because there's a commute to go do it. And that takes a lot of the spontaneity out of it. And uh, I'm a very planned and engineering person, but I'm also a very spontaneous person. And especially when it comes to creativity, I really need that spontaneity to stimulate that creativity. And then that creativity is what makes me go back and do all the planning and engineering and build the projects that I do. You know, that all comes from that creativity. And to get that creative spark and capture that creative spark into a creative fire can be really challenging. It was super challenging for me when I was in British Columbia both for personal space, due to my domestic situation, and, uh, and due to the, 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 the city that I lived in, basically. I moved from the country, the farm, to a city, Saanich, British Columbia. It's part of Victoria, British Columbia. It's a capital. It's a very busy city. It's a beautiful city, but it's very busy, and it's not what I'm used to. So, yeah, I don't know. Those are just my thoughts, I guess. Farming and that kind of thing. I absolutely could not pass up the opportunity to share this beautiful sunset with you. Just stunning. Just gorgeous.
You know where we're going. We're going to get you a shot by the horse farm here because the view here is just phenomenal. Just absolutely phenomenal. I suppose it was about time that I switched to a more appropriate nighttime video technology. Completely forgot I had a FLIR camera in my pocket. Oh, there goes the truck. So let's take a look at these crops under infrared. Because we've been studying all the plants in planters, but we haven't been studying anything in the field, have we? Wow, look at that. Look at the warm zone around the roots of those potatoes. <sighs> look at how warm those plants are. Holy cow, that's so cool. Don't mind me. I'm just excited. I'll put the line up here and give a scan. Amazing how much more heat the stones hold. Some of them. see that raised bed makes a huge difference in soil temperature look at how much cooler the lower part of the bed is down here where the bed is lower in the soil versus where the bed is raised up and active I mean I would say we have good microbial activity there and I'm sure a lot of that thermal energy is from sunshine but but you can also see right around the base of those plants a lot of microbial activity and, and thermal activity, right? Like, they're active. And so that means that they're emitting infrared energy. <clears throat> and if you listen to Dr. Gerald Pollack talk about infrared energy, um, and water and structuring water, um, well, it's a very deep topic, pardon the pun, but uh, but it's very interesting that infrared energy is what structures water, and that structured water is basically acts very differently from the other types and phases of water, right? We have liquid, we have vapor, we have ice, and then there's this other phase of water, the fourth phase of water. So if you're not familiar with Dr. Gerald Pollack, I highly recommend you listen to his audiobook or read the book, The Fourth Phase of Walker. All right, so let's continue down our rows here. Some very large plants here. I got my headlight on, let me see. I guess it's not really affecting it. That's good. And there's a, a small one here dead space here. Let's look at the dead space. And you see that warm area right around the plant again. A couple of rocks on either side of this plant marking a variety change. And we're into a different variety over here now. Or not variety, but different uh, seed stock. I believe this is the main seed stock we're into now. I believe we were in the Minnesota seed stock before. There's some calcium sulfate on the surface right here. Just uh, help calibrate how things look in thermal imagery. So 
I guess we've looked at this end pretty well. We'll work our way down toward the, the better soil end. And these plants are like tight together, growing really well, healthy in a row, good germination. Just a uh, nice uniformity in the row here. So I guess we'll just get a good scan of it in thermal. And then there's a dead spot here. I think we just uh, scraped a few with a row former. And that's probably why those are crammed together so tight there. All right, this is about in the dip. It's about halfway down, maybe. And we'll just work our way along. Have a look at this nice edge row. This row on the edge was really banging and showing nice. Today when I drove by, it was looking so pretty in the sun, growing so healthy. All right, we're getting down into the nicer soil land here. See what our oh oh look at that we have a little bit bigger more robust looking plants and to me at least at a glance it looks like those plants are running much cooler uh, than the other ones so that makes me wonder if the other ones are a little out of tune still uh, granted they just did get a foliar feed today so Hopefully that'll bring them back into tune if I've calibrated and targeted my foliar feed and nutritional regimen correctly. That's tricky to do without plant sap analysis, but we don't have quite enough plants here to justify plant sap analysis this year. Um, but rest assured that it's coming in the future, because that is the only way to really make sure your crops stay tuned, is to actually test see where they're at, adjust, retest, see if your adjustment worked. You know, this is science, right? Science, not bro science, just actual science. So one spot here where the bed former caught a few clumps of uh, like organic material, hay, straw, etc. And clumped up and like you can see where I formed along and I had to lift up and drop the clump but it's interesting how much warmer that clump is where the, all the organic material is inside of that breaking down again this is a great way to see you know that there's microbial activity going on in soils they look very benign in a normal view right no, I mean, it just looks like soil. But when you look at it in the right spectrum, there's a whole lot more to learn. And this is only one spectrum. Imagine if we could select through all the different spectrums and look at each one. What might we find? So now we'll just look at a few tomato plants on this end. Not a tremendous amount of activity around that. Still a fairly small plant. Same. 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 We'll go check a few on the other end. While I walk, I'll let you have a look around. We'll just look at a couple down on this end. Hmm. Can't say a thing. Can't say I notice anything super remarkable. But I thought it would be interesting to look at this stuff um, in thermal. And we'll go up and take a look at turmeric, ginger, 
and the like as well. this rock ridge and looking at all the cedar poles here. I figure I'd take a look at them in thermal and see if there's anything interesting or noticeable. <laughs> I figured I'd share the lack of interest in with you. <laughs> I know, I know, the weirdo farming at night. You'd be surprised how peaceful it is out here at night. You were a good headlight man. It's almost like daytime, but more peaceful. Just out here looking at these potato plants. And uh, looking pretty good overall. They got a foliar feed today. Uh, four products from Advancing Eco Agriculture. Rejuvenate. Uh, accelerate. Rebound Copper. And Rebound Iron. All... Uh, Aimed at accelerating photosynthetic action and providing complete trace mineral and hormonal nutritional support for plants. Um, and these plants are responding very well so far for everything we've done for them. And that is very encouraging. But it's been a few weeks, uh, probably actually about a month. Mm. Might be three weeks. But it's time to go back and have a look and see how our root systems are looking. Because it's always a good idea to go back and take a look at your root system on your plants and just see how things look. And yeah, I'm hitting some nice root mass in there. And I can feel they're reaching root out into here. So they're reaching out into, like, out into the space. So I would say that we got good uh, root action. And, you know, we can see that at the top of the plant here too, right? They're healthy, happy, or at least appear to be healthy, happy, well-growing plants. Um, but it's always good to go back uh, during the season and have a look and just see, you know, how are the roots performing? How do things look? Um... And more importantly, to go back and walk up and down your rows and look at plants. Look at plants on an individual basis. Make observations. You'll start to notice a lot more as you do. And that'll fine-tune your skills as a grower. I wanted to share a couple of different examples here in the tomato row. The one out by the potatoes here. Here's one that didn't get chewed on. Here's one that got chewed on. And here's one that when they chewed on it, they apparently hadn't set it tight enough. And when they chewed on it, they pulled it out or they lifted too much when they chewed on it. And it yanked it out and that killed it. But here's another one they chewed the top off of. Sprouting back. And another. And another. So even though they've chewed the top off, what do we know about that? Well, we know that prune the top that encourages root growth, which will stimulate much more root growth, and then that will come back and grow us more shoot growth. So it'll be interesting to watch these throughout the season and see how that affects their yield because they haven't killed them and we'll probably stake them and grow them out.